Inksters and friends, this is Diane, the Creative Inkster, coming to you live from Guelph, Ontario on Thursday, June 24th. This is today's project. It's a 3D project. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you're watching live, please leave a comment uh, so I know that you're watching along with me and you can ask questions. We'll interact. And if you're watching on the replay, that's wonderful. I'll be able to read your comment afterwards. So I wanted to do a 3D project that was a little, a little more this week. Um, and so I thought about this uh, little box of tissues that I had made many, many years ago in different variations. So this one I think is fairly straightforward for the instructions. I'm going to post all the measurements on my blog and I'll link the blog, uh, the blog post in the comment section here with this video. So what I'm using is the Kleenex boxes, little packages. Um, these I bought at Walmart and they came eight or 10 in a package. So just to give you an idea, when I give you the measurements, you're gonna have to make sure that your piece is gonna fit in there. If it's Kleenex and it's this size, it should be a good fit, but just in case you might need to modify a little bit. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing we need is a piece of cardstock that measures seven and a half inches this way and eight inches this way. And we'll grab our scoring tool. This is my Simply Scored. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here. And um, along the eight inch side, I'm, again, I'm going to put all these measurements in my blog post so that you can um, get them all written down very easily. But along the eight inch side, we're gonna score at one half an inch. It's always a tricky measurement to get, I find, because it is right in the edge. So one half an inch, one and three quarters, six and a quarter, and seven and a half. That was one half, one and three quarters, six and a quarter, and seven and a half. Now we're going to turn it with the seven and a half inch side along the top. We're now going to score it at two and a quarter, three and a half, five and three quarters, and seven. That's two and a quarter, three and a half, five and three quarters. Oh, oh, sorry, five and three quarters <laughs> and seven. I just missed that line. I was thinking that was the three quarters line. That's okay. This is my sample. It's all good. All right, we're done scoring. Next up is doing some folding of and burnishing of our score line. So I'm going to try to remember that that is the five and three quarter line. So I'm going to score that one first. And then I'm going to score all of them. And I score away from the divot. So when you score in, you get a divot down here. I score away from that. Or I'm sorry, I fold away from that. And then do them all. Even though we're going to trim a whole bunch of pieces off, it's easier if you do them all this way first, especially these little half inch sides. They're a little bit more tricky. Okay, so now you've got this lovely scored and um, burnished piece. What you're going to want to do is with the half inch edge, so this edge here, the half inch edge, and this large square to your left, but this little half inch at the top and a half inch at the bottom, you're gonna cut up to the second score line on all the score lines. So, you're going to start on one end and you're gonna go past the first score line that's horizontal to the second one. And then to the next one over, same thing. Up to that second score line. And this one, and the fourth one. Okay, so now we have all kinds of tabs here. 
we're going to turn it over 90 or move it 90 180 degrees and we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side we're going to cut up to the second score line the second horizontal one you see not the first one we need that we need those for tabs i'll show you that in just a second okay now you're left with a piece that looks like this okay so there's our little tabs for a minute we're just going to look over here on this large wide section which is two and a quarter wide this piece here we are going to cut off the two scored sections at the top and the bottom so grab your scissors and cut that right off and same on this side cut it right off right so now your piece is looking like this we have a little bit more trimming to do on the other side where we have these very thin flat pieces we are going to cut that off as well entirely at the second score line so let's go ahead and do that oh, i'm just not got up too far there and this side too so now we have that big flap at the top and the little flap here. We're going to just miter the edges and that just means cut a little triangle off the edge. What this does is takes a little bulk out of it as it goes together. So you don't have all this extra bulk and allows the flaps that are going to close up on the sides to fit in there very nicely. Okay, so back to having the nice big piece to your right you've now got these flaps. On the two smaller ones, you're gonna cut off this short, thin piece here. So you're gonna cut that one off. You're gonna skip over the middle one and the other one here, the smaller square, you're going to cut that off to that edge. So that's what that end looks like now. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. So turn it 180. We're going to leave the middle one alone and we're going to cut the first score line off on the two squares. One, two. I have a little piece here I'm going to trim off. It's just kind of hanging on there like a hangnail. Okay, we get our bits and pieces out. This is the final product. I like to keep this larger piece in one side so I know exactly where it is. Okay, and oh yeah, one last piece of trimming. On your tabs, on these larger rectangles in the middle, you're gonna miter those as well. It'll just help them close a little better. So on both sides, you miter those off. Now I think we're done with our scissors. Okay. Before we put the box together, it would be a good idea to do two things. One, put some of our pattern paper on, and two, uh, punch a hole for the tissues to come out of. So, with your large piece, how this goes together, give you a visual, is the small tab is going to go underneath. Okay, and then once it's secure, the two ends are going to close up just to give you an idea how this is going to go together. So if this is the top of our box, this is where I want the hole to come. Now you can do a couple things. You can use a die or a punch, but I recommend that you first off glue your pattern paper down. So the pattern paper for the large rectangle on the top is four and a quarter by two. So I'm going to glue it down. Just using my uh, stamp and seal. So there's a little border, just like when we do cards, there's a little border there. Okay. And then um, on this panel, so see how that goes over like that? On this panel, we're going to put a piece that is four and a quarter by one. Now, I'm not too concerned about my pattern here because this one doesn't matter for up and down. But when I did this one, it kind of matters which way those toadstools are looking, right? So you want to keep that in mind. So it helps to just kind of get your piece 
looking how it should go and then you'll know which way is up for your designer series paper. I kind of did a cheat on this one, didn't have to worry about that. But it is a lot easier to add it once you've got it flat before you start before you start messing with it and it gets taller. Okay, so then the same on this piece. So looking at our model, the back is this flap here, right here. So we're gonna put a piece of pattern paper. It measures four and a quarter by one as well. Now, if you had a really fancy paper, you could do where you know it runs on, so it looks like, like you didn't really have a break in the pattern at all. I didn't think that way. I just had a whole bunch of scraps from this paper pack, which is the Sand and Sea and is retiring next week and just wanted to use it up. This is our bottom. I'm not going to put anything on the bottom. Okay, we'll save our last two pieces of designer series paper for when we close the flap. So these measure two inches by one inch and they go on the ends, but we'll wait till we get it in the closed position, I think. Uh, actually, no, we don't have to. That's true. We don't have to. We can put those down too. No, I don't. We. Oops. Today is our free shipping day, so if you are in the market to place an order for some Stampin' Up, even your adhesives, envelopes, and card stuff, the basic stuff you need, be sure to place an order before midnight. It is uh, free shipping, so you save 10%, which is fabulous. Okay, the only glue we have to put is on here, and that's going to come around here. But we're not quite ready to glue it yet because we need to put an oval or a circle or in my case I'm going to use the everyday label punch because that's easy for me. Now I don't want this to show when this is underneath like this there's going to piece, be a piece that shows up so I'm just going to piece it on the front for placement and then I've punched out one of these everyday labels so I can get an idea where I want this to go so that it won't be mucked up by that seam that goes under there if that makes sense. So I'm pretty sure I need it close to the top on this one. So I'm going to take some tape, just regular old scotch tape, and uh, take some of the sticky off of it and kind of hold that in place. That'll just be a temporary hold. Now I can take my punch and go up through there and line it up where that is. I'm probably over a little bit, but it's not gonna matter. And punch really hard and you'll get those three pieces out. And then you can tear off any of your scotch tape that's still sticking behind. There we go, there we go. Okay, now we're ready to put it together. So. I'm going to take my flap here and I'm going to use the tan tape this time. I used um, stamp and seal on my sample and uh, I think the tan tape is the way to go on this one or maybe the stamp and seal plus but mine's not handy so here we go with the tear and tape. So I've removed the backing. This just folds right over because it's the box is a um, all the sides are the same like the two sides here and the two front. And then I'm going to fold the edges in and then I'm ready to stick my tissues in. So I did play with being able to not take it right out of the package, but that's what I am doing. This is for me, so I'm totally fine with that. If I was giving it to somebody, I'd give it to them in the package and um, let them do this if they wanted. So it slides in there and you fold this piece over and that just tucks in there nicely. And oops, that's really the top. And then here's your piece sticking up. And then when you pull them out, they come out one at a time. You could put a get well or thinking of you or just for you or any kind of greeting you want on there. Now you could not, you could center this more top to bottom and not worry about that little piece showing through or, or trim it off. But uh, this just kind of made it easy. And I really don't think you noticed it all that much. 
Okay, so that is the project for today. Thank you for watching. Uh, have something new next week again. Uh, next week is actually July the 1st, Canada Day. So it may be pre-recorded, it may be live. It doesn't take long to go live. And I will put all the measurements for this on my blog and let you know in the comments below where to find the blog post. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye for now.